All right, I was asked to make a video of these homework problems on pages 211 and 212. I know I already posted the answer key, but if you want to see um, a video explanation, I'm going to go over these fairly quickly. Okay, so for this one, first thing we're going to do is factor. That factor, factors into x minus 5, x plus 2 over x plus 1. Okay, so your domain is everything except for negative 1. So negative infinity to negative 1. The union with, notice we don't include the negative 1. Negative 1 to infinity. Removable discontinuities, there are none. The reason there are none, because there's no factors that cancel. Okay, this discontinuity at negative 1 is going to be a vertical asymptote, because the x plus 1 uh, factor doesn't cancel. So x equals negative 1. The multiplicity of that asymptote is odd. More specifically is 1, because that's just x plus 1 to the first. It only occurs one time. And what that tells us is that coming towards this asymptote, our graph is going to approach that in opposite directions. Okay, so from one side we go off to positive infinity, one side we go off to negative infinity. For instance, coming from the left, we might go to positive infinity. Coming from the right, we might go to negative infinity. End behavior asymptotes. Uh, well, um, so those are either horizontal asymptotes or oblique asymptotes. So this is top heavy by one degree, second degree and first degree. So we're going to do the the division, I'll do it up here, x plus 1, and we're going to divide that into x squared minus 3x minus 10. We know it doesn't divide evenly because um, x plus 1 is not a factor of the numerator. So x goes into x squared, x times, multiply, x squared plus x, we're going to subtract, subtract, we get negative 4x minus 10 x times negative 4 gives you negative 4x, so we get minus 4, negative 4x, negative 4 times 1 is minus 4, subtract and subtract, so that becomes minus 6, so minus 6 over x plus 1, but remember it's an end behavior asymptote, and on the ends, x is going to infinity or negative infinity, when your denominator goes off to infinity, the entire fraction goes off to 0. Okay. So our end behavior asymptote is going to be the line y equals x minus 4. Okay. X intercepts. X intercepts are values of x that make your y value 0. So if we set this entire function equal to 0, that's only 0 when the numerator equals 0. So positive 5 and negative 2. 5 comma 0 and negative 2 comma 0. Okay. Both of those have a multiplicity of 1 because it's just x, plus, x minus 5 to the first and x plus 2 to the first. So both of those are odd. Multiplicity, which means when you uh, touch the x-axis, you're going to cross right through the x-axis. So crosses. And that crosses through as opposed to to bouncing off of the x-axis if it were an even mul multiplicity. Y-intercept, that happens when x is 0. Plug in 0 for x. 0, 0, you get negative 10 on the top, and 0 plus 1, so you get negative 10 over 1. Okay, let's graph. I like to graph the asymptotes first. x equals negative 1. And, uh, there's no horizontal asymptotes, but there's an oblique asymptote. Slope of 1, y-intercept of negative 4. Okay, let's plot our um, intercepts. The y-intercept is 0, negative 10, all the way down here at the bottom. X-intercepts are 5, comma, 0 and negative 2, comma, 0. We have a pretty good idea what that's going to look like, probably like this and like this. But we can plot another couple points, x and y. I would plot something like maybe negative 4 and negative 3. Plugging those into your equation, you would get negative 
4 we would give you a negative 6. Negative 3 would give you a negative 4. I'll leave you to plug those in and verify that. Okay. Um, and then I plug in a value over here. Maybe x is positive 2. When you plug in positive 2, you're going to get a value of negative 4. So negative 4, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 3, negative 4. And 2, comma, negative 4. You can see you get a nice graph right in here. And just double check our multiplicities, make sure that makes sense. Both of these um, x intercept multiplicities were odd, which means you cross over the x axis as opposed to bouncing and coming back the way you came. And we cross right through for both of those. And the vertical asymptote, x equals negative 1. Um, as you approach this line, x equals negative 1. From the left, you're going up towards positive infinity and from the left i'm sorry from the right you're going down towards negative infinity so approaching this asymptote because it has an odd uh, multiplicity you can see your graph is going to be going in opposite directions as you approach that asymptote all right and i might as well do the other one 212 this one is similar to one we went over in class this thing factors and it factors into 2x plus 5 times x minus 2 over and i'm going to factor out a 2 2 times x minus 2 and what do you know those cancel so there's going to be a removable discontinuity when x is 2 uh, but this simplifies to 2x plus 5 all over 2 you can further simplify that into 2x over 2 is just x, 5 over 2 is 5 halves. Okay, so this means your function really just simplifies into a linear function. The slope, oops, 5 over 2, not 5 over x. Linear function with a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 2.5. Okay, so we can figure out everything else domain everything except for a positive 2 there is going to be a discontinuity there so negative infinity to positive 2 and union with positive 2 to infinity the removable discontinuity since the factor of x minus 2 cancels and x is positive 2 we get a removable discontinuity and you'll plug 2 into your function the simplified version of the function so 2 plus 5 halves, that's going to be 4 halves plus 5 halves, or 9 halves, or a value of 4.5. Okay. Um, vertical asymptote, there's none. Look at what's your denominator, zero, but if it cancels, it's not going to be a vertical asymptote. It's going to be the other kind of discontinuity. End behavior asymptote, now this is a little tricky because... It's top heavy by one degree, so that makes you think there's a slant asymptote. Okay, the tricky thing is that slant asymptote is actually your entire function, so it's not really an asymptote. So you could either say none, or I'd even accept it if you said that your asymptote, if you did this division and you got this, you could say y equals x plus 5 halves. It's not technically an asymptote because it's your graph. Okay, um, but if you said that, I would accept that, following the rule of dividing because it's top heavy by one degree. Vertical asymptote, multiplicity, uh, not applicable because there are none. X-intercepts, okay, X-intercepts happen when Y is zero. So if you set this thing equal to zero, your X value is going to be negative five halves. Your y-intercept happens when x is 0. So you plug in 0 for x, you're going to get 5 halves. So you can see it right there, 5 halves. X-intercept multiplicity is odd because there's, this thing only occurs once. Um, 
and so you're going to cross through as opposed to a bounce. Now, a lot of this stuff kind of seems, seems less, less relevant when you realize you're just graphing a line. Y equals X plus 2.5. So 2.5 is your uh, Y intercept. Slope of 1. Let's see right there. So you're going to actually cross here at x value of negative 2.5. Um, that's your x intercept. And your removable discontinuity is at 2, comma, 4 and a half. So 2, comma, one, two, three, four and a half. That point at there is going to be an open circle. Pass through. And that's your graph. Okay. Looks different from the other ones because um, you end up with something that's really just linear. I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching.